Welcome to the Pandemic Pinup Happy Hour. Um, thank you for tuning in at our new time. I have officially gone back into the workforce and I'm trying to juggle this and my other schedule. So hopefully we'll be able to stay at 5 p.m. and not have to make any further changes. But if 5 p.m. isn't a good time for you or you just want to watch it later, I always put the videos up on YouTube and Facebook. So today, we are doing fall flavors, which I'm super excited about. It's my favorite season of the year. Plus it's the season I was born in, which makes it that much more awesome, at least for me. But we are exploring um, some interesting drinks today. We have some spirits that we may have used before, some new infusions. So we'll just get right into it. Um, I think the first one I want to make is to, let's see, we'll do, we'll do the one that's called In Season. So in season, name such because the figs that are in it are currently in season. They tend to be a fall fruit, at least in our part of the world. So if you followed along with any of the instructions that are on the flyer, um, I'm pretty sure I specified Grand Marnier to infuse your figs into. I currently didn't have Grand Marnier. I just used um, the Mathilde um, orange liqueur that I used last week. So you could really use anything you want. Grand Marnier just has a really rich, bold flavor profile that stands up to the figs. Um, however, after trying it with Mathilde, I might not go back. Uh, it's just like finger looking good, if you can even say that about something that's a liquid. Not entirely sure. But I wanted to make a really fall-centric style, kind of like a Negroni, just in the sense that it's a stirred cocktail, uh, but it's not really a Negroni. Um, not even going to try and open that Pandora's box, but you will need a mixing glass and a cocktail spoon. But this is a very simple cocktail. We're going to be using slow gin as our base spirit. We're going to use a whole ounce and a half. So I'm just going to pour that directly into our mixing glass. And then just to kind of brighten it up a little bit, we are gonna add some actual gin. So you're gonna add a half ounce of gin. It can be any gin of your preference, but not all gins are created equal. So whatever gin you choose will alter this cocktail a little bit. But it's a small amount. We're actually using gin as the modifier. So it's not, it's not a huge amount. Then we're gonna take that amazing fig infused orange liqueur I have in my little jar over here. I have so many jars. My house looks like an apothecary right now. We're gonna use a half ounce of this. And I really hope if nothing else, maybe you don't make any of my cocktails ever, but infuse some orange liqueur with figs. It's probably one of the best ideas I've had yet on this show. It's like my new favorite thing ever. I will put that back up there. So we have ounce and a half of slow gin. We have a half ounce of gin, a half ounce of our fig infused orange liqueur. And I wanted to kind of round it out. And instead of using vermouth, which would be more common in say a Negroni, I chose sherry. And the sherry I'm working with is an Amontillado style sherry. I'm not really sure if y'all can read that. Um, but there's a lot of different styles of sherry. This one seems to be the one I'm like just in love with recently. Um, try it out with other sherries. Maybe you'll like it more. But we're gonna use a three quarter ounce. We'll just pour that also directly into our mixing glass. So now that we've got all that in there, we're gonna add some ice. It is a cold cocktail after all. I just love the color of this. It becomes this like super ruby red, really, really pretty color. We're gonna give it, I don't know. I never really give good instructions for certain cocktails. You could say like, I don't know, 30 to 50 revolutions. Um, Because the thing is, is like when you're making this at home, if you're following along, I don't know what kind of ice you have. And not all ice melts the same. Shape matters. Surface area matters. The temperature of your ice matters. So I always say, do it till it feels right, which is also kind of hard to tell. <laughs> But for me, I usually stir until my glass is almost like uncomfortably cold to hold. And once the ice starts floating around where it gets a little harder to stir, that's usually my like key. So I think it's like, I don't know, about 20 seconds. 
I'll time it next time, guys. Sorry. Sorry for the mind. So simple, simple, simple. We're going to go ahead and strain this into this cute little glass that I have. And if you are watching on Facebook, I'm going to try and pull that up in a minute in case there's any comments. I'm terrible at juggling work, this, and technology all on the same day. But I'll, I'll get it. This is just the first one. So I love this. It almost looks like a glass of port just because the color of that solution is so nice. But I will say figs, especially dry ones, are notoriously difficult to make garnishes out of. So I've played around with these figs and none of them looked appealing. Dry figs aren't cute, guys. They're not. Fresh figs are beautiful. Dry figs, not so much. But I ended up slicing it to where you can see all the seeds because I think that's always super cool. And then I'm going to just lay that on top. And that, guys, is in season. Just wait a second. Oh my gosh, this is such a delicious cocktail. You get like all of these fruity notes, but without them being like bright summer fruit, they have that like stone fruit quality to it, the flavors. And that fig is just super rich. The orange is actually kind of subtle. Um, and I will say, I tried this out with a couple different gins. I really enjoyed it with Sif Smith. Um, I tried it out with an Italian uh, gin called Fiori that I also really enjoyed. Um, the one I'm using today is just some like base gin that costs like, I don't know, 12 bucks a bottle. There are way better gins than this. Please use a better gin. Um, but yeah, if you use something like Hendrix, Hendrix has a lot of floral and cucumber notes that would come through. If you use like something, say more mainstream, well, I guess Hendrix is pretty mainstream. But if you use something mainstream like Tangeray or Tangeray 10, it's got those heavy pine notes, which I love, which is also super seasonal pine trees, cold weather. So all of those would be very solid choices. And then we're going to go on to our next cocktail. Trying to pull up the Facebook just in case, just in case. Most people just message me after, which is fine too. So our second cocktail, if you've watched enough of these, or if you just know me, I love egg white cocktails. I don't know what it is. I know there's like the whole aquafaba train. I'm not on it. I am all about egg white cocktails. So we're gonna make one because it's my show. I get to do whatever I want because I'm not sponsored by anybody. So there are no rules, people. I do everything I wanna do. So I'm a huge fan of mythology. It was kind of like my geeky thing when I was a kid. Um, and part of the lore in Greek mythology as to why fall occurs is that Persephone, um, who was this very beautiful young woman, um, was abducted and then her mother was in grieving because she couldn't get her back because she was abducted into the underworld. So she, in her grief, had so much control over nature that everything started to die. And that's their explanation of why fall happens the way it does. And I just think it's such a neat little way to explain it. There's so many different things. We know things grow, things die. But back in the day, people didn't have the knowledge that we have. And they're just like, why does this happen? Like, imagine you've never seen a season change. And then all of a sudden, everything starts dying around you. You would think the world was ending. So in this lore or in this story, a mother's grief is so intense that it sends a world, an entire world, into dismay of cold. And she eventually gets her back, which is what spring is. Maybe in the springtime, I'll make a Persephone's return cocktail. But... Persephone's abduction is going to be our cocktail for today. So there was a rum that I sent out some specs for on how to infuse it with pumpkin and ginger. So we're going to use an ounce and a half of that rum. And then we're going to use a three quarter ounce of pomegranate juice. I'm going to bring the story full circle with the pomegranates here in a second. So we're gonna use three quarter ounce, put that into our cocktail shaker. We need some port wine. Um, the two most common types of port are tawny and ruby. This one's a tawny. You could use ruby. It's just gonna be a little bit of a different flavor profile, but it'll still taste like port. So I'm gonna use a half ounce of that. Fresh squeezed lemon juice. It's the best. It's the bee's knees, as they say. So we're going to use a half ounce of fresh lemon juice and a half ounce of some simple syrup. 
And then to bring it all home and round out these fall flavors that we've got going on in here, we're gonna add some pumpkin. But not just any pumpkin, we're gonna add some pumpkin butter. Now you can buy pumpkin butter in the store. Um, I've actually used some of the ones you buy in the store for cocktails. To me, these tend to be a little too sweet, not spiced enough, and their texture is kind of funny. So I just made my own. I took some pumpkin, put it in a slow cooker with a little bit of brown sugar, um, a splash of white wine and a bunch of spices, let it cook down until it was absolutely mush. And then I have pumpkin butter. So I might just take a small spoon. There's not like a huge measurement, but this is similar in size to my bar spoon. But yeah, just a spoon of pumpkin butter directly into there. And then it wouldn't be an egg white cocktail without the egg white. So I'm gonna put that in there too. Also, if you've done enough of these, you know I am a fan of the classic dry shake, and then it's reverse nonsense. So we're just gonna shake dry for about 10, 20, 30 seconds, however long you can take. I've been shaking all day, so I don't know how long this is gonna go, but probably about 15 seconds, just to be on the safe side. There's no point in using an egg white if you're not gonna have a frothy cocktail. So once you've got a decent amount of froth in there, I'm gonna add our ice. That has to be a ton of ice. And we're going to shake it again. So, as the story of Persephone goes, she was abducted by Hades, the Lord of the Underworld. And when her mother pled for her return, he said that she could return as long as she had not eaten anything in the underworld. So, unfortunately, she had eaten exactly three pomegranates. So she was only able to return for a very small amount of time. So every year she comes back for just a little bit and then has to go back because she ate the fruit. If you're sensing a theme here, it's about women eating fruit and damning the entire world to terrible things. So not that that's necessarily true, but I thought it was an interesting parallel. So for our garnish, I have this big old slice of ginger I'm sitting right in there. And it's super long just because I have a really long glass, but you could definitely do something smaller or put it on a little skewer. And then we're gonna decorate it with exactly three, you guessed it, pomegranate seeds. So put them right in the middle. Hopefully they stay kind of on top. They're a little heavy, but it's kind of cool. They like fall into the, they sink slowly as she goes into the depths of hell. <laughs> but ladies and gents, that, is Persephone's abduction. Go get a like much nicer top view when I do like the whole photo spiel that ends up on Instagram. It needs a little time to sit so that foam is a little nice and dense to hold up these pomegranate seeds. They are very much at the bottom of the spring right now. They're still tasty though. It's like little treats. I'm not everybody knows all the snacks in the spring. And then last but not least, we have a cocktail that I am using kind of a play on words instead of Tomorrow we die, which is part of a toast, you know, drink and live and be happy and merry because tomorrow we may die. It is instead tomorrow we rye because I love rye whiskey and rye whiskey really makes me think of fall. There's just something about the little bit of a bite that it has in the back of your throat when you drink it. And then the like the spice hints that it can have. Those things just really make me crave colder weather. So I'll drink rye all the time, but when it's fall, it's like, way up on my list of things I really like. But being a whiskey drinker, I usually go for like super alcohol forward cocktails. Um, I love like old fashions and Manhattan. So I wanted to try and make it a little bit more approachable, still stay within the season, but make it a little daintier, a little less old man leather chair cigar lounge, if you will. So for tomorrow we lie, we will need also a cocktail shaker. We're gonna use an ounce and a half of my absolute favorite rye whiskey in the world, Pendleton 1910. Fantastic rye, age 12 years, plus the bottle is gorgeous. But we're gonna use a whole ounce and a half. Put that right there. 
that in there. And then there was something that I had y'all make that we're just gonna call velvet hair. So it's a combination of hair liqueur and velvet phalanum. Velvet phalanum, phalanum, velvet phalanum um, has a really heavy like allspice clove flavor to it. Um, it used to be a non-alcoholic kind of sweetener, but then they got smart, added some alcohol to it, which really makes my job a lot happier. So we're combining two liqueurs, the spiced liqueur and the pear liqueur to get those fall notes. Those are our flavors for this, the pear and the spice. So it was, um, I wanna say it's like 75, 25% give or take is kind of the ratio, but the exact ratio is definitely on the flyer on the page. So we're gonna be using an ounce and a quarter of the mix. So that one. This is definitely still very alcohol forward cocktail. It's just not gonna taste like it, so it's sneaky. So just be careful if you're making these at home because uh, this is not all the alcohol I get. So ounce and a half of rye, ounce and a quarter of our velvet pear. We're gonna use a three quarter ounce of lime juice. And then a three quarter ounce of the thyme and pear simple syrup that we have here. And I know on the surface, this sounds like it's gonna be wildly sweet, but I promise it's not. I'm topping it off with fruit champagne and it's gonna balance it all out. If that was all about champagne, it'd be way too sweet. You can always dial back some of these amounts and adjust them to your power. I'm adding some ice to my shaker. <laughs> Give it a little what for. Okay. Then got this nice little martini glass, even though I'm not making a martini. I don't think martini glasses get used as often for martinis as for other beverages. So many people like the glass. I'm gonna strain that in here. And you can double strain this if you're worried about like any ice chips or anything. Entirely personal preference. Then we're gonna top it off with a little bit of brewed champagne. I definitely do not recommend like Prosecco, Moscato, anything sweet. Stick with something like kava or an extra dry or a brew. So it's about two ounces, kind of depends on your glass. And then to make it all pretty, Put some thyme sprigs on top. They're so festive looking anyway, making like a little star. And then I took a pear and made these really nice little pear chips. I'll put one of those on top because I'm a fat kid inside. I want to snack with all my drinks. I like garnishes that are edible, but also functional, that also look pretty, that are also resourceful because now these will last me all season, even if I'm not making this stuff. So that's going to go right there on top. And that, guys, is for tomorrow. Why? Here. That tastes like you shouldn't drive home. That's what that tastes like. <laughs> but yes, our class today is short and sweet. Um, fall flavors, very simple. Most of these drinks are pretty quick to make. That's, I feel like, also part of it. Um, I like to be kind of lazy in the winter. It's cold. I don't want to move around too much. I want to stay warm. A lot of these batch really easily into, like, punches or pitchers worth of things. So if you would like those ratios, let me know. Um, next week, I'm super excited. We're going to be doing what I call sweater weather cocktails. They're all hot cocktails. We have boozy hot chocolate. Um, I think we have a cider and I think, well, not a cider, a wasso. I'm more of a wasso fan than a cider fan, but they're both delicious. And the other one, you know, I don't remember. So I guess it'll be a surprise for all of us. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go ahead and end our live as I do. Um, oh my gosh. Yes. Let's go wassailing. I would love that. I don't know if Texas is really the place to do that, but I'd be down. If we can wassail and I can wear my boots, my cowboy boots, I'm so here for it. But, um, but yes, as we go into the fall season, y'all will be seeing a lot of themes. Um, just a quick reminder, there are two days left to participate in this giveaway that I have going on on Instagram. All you gotta do is make one of my cocktails or pretend to make one of my cocktails. Take a picture, tag me in it, 
show me some love and then I will send you some very special bingo cards for our pre-Thanksgiving class that will be dysfunctional family bingo. So if you just need a good giggle, um, go ahead and get on that. That's all, I'll just mail them to you. No like strings attached. But I will see y'all next Sunday at five, hopefully, as long as my life stays consistent, but it is a pandemic so nobody knows. Um, if there are any changes, I will be sure to update everybody. Enjoy your next few days or your next seven days or six days between now and next Sunday. And cheers. Goodbye to all the viewers that are in the Zoom room. <laughs>